Hi, I'm Tom Long. This week on Island Meditations, we're going to be trying to answer the question, if you did not grow up in the church or going to churches so far in your past, you don't really remember much about it, and you wanted to know what is the message of the Bible? What is the message of the church? What would be the most important thing for you to learn and to learn first? So we're going to try to answer that question, at least as I've thought about it, this is the answer that I've come up with. And we're going to be doing that at the new and beautiful, uh, as you look at this river behind me, the Shalote River, this new river walk in Shalote, North Carolina. What a, what a great area to be thinking about the God who created all of this natural beauty. So I invite you to join me on this. And if you're an old saw at uh, Christianity and church going and studying the Bible, those sorts of things, I would be interested to know how would you answer the question? The most important thing for someone that wanted to understand what the church is all about and what the message of the Bible is all about, what would be the first thing that you would want to tell them? So I would appreciate it if you would share that in the comments below. And now let's get straight to answering the question as we walk along this beautiful river walk and see what it is that God has created here and what the message is that he has for those that are kicking the tires on whether or not the church or the Bible might have something to offer them in their lives. Thanks for joining me today. Let's get to walking and thinking. Before we get to the best Bible passage to introduce someone to who the Bible tells us God is, I want to provide a little context. A good guideline for any Bible study is to remember the old saying, a text without a context is just a pretext. The point of that being that if you lift verses or even passages out of context, you can misuse the Bible to make it say whatever you want it to say. The Christian Bible consists of 66 books. The collection of the first 39 books are called the Old Testament, and the last 27 books are collected into the New Testament. We call them that because the Old Testament tells us or testifies to the Old Covenant, and the New Testament testifies to the New Covenant. God made a covenant with the people of Israel, the Jews. And while there were actually several such agreements that appear in the Old Testament, they all were between God and the Jews. These books of the Bible were originally written in Hebrew. Now, even in the Old Testament, those covenants included God's promise that he would bless all of the nations of the world through Israel. So, when God establishes a new covenant, we're not surprised to learn that this covenant, though it springs from Judaism and one Jew in particular, Jesus, it is a covenant that is offered to both Jews and Gentiles. The New Testament, which tells us about this covenant, was originally written primarily in Greek. Let's go directly to the verse I consider to be the most important verse for anyone outside the church to understand. In John 3.16, the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Whether you believe in God or you don't, whether you see yourself as good or bad, whether you are Jew or Gentile, male or female, a prisoner or free, the Bible tells us that there is a God and that this God loves the whole world. God's love for you, whoever you are, moved God to send his son Jesus into the world, someone who was at once divine and human. God did this so that we would not perish. At least Perish is the word one translation uses to express the Greek word apolitai, which means to take a life by cutting it off, separating it from its source. The most common example from the time was pruning a tree or plant. The pruned limbs would die because they had been separated from the living plant. I'll come back to how that is relevant to us as the people God loved enough to send a son. But first, let's look at the alternative to perishing. 
God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Now, a lot of people assume that this refers only to life after death. But when the Bible tells us about Jesus' prayer to God, we learn that Jesus said, Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. So it turns out that eternal life is simply a life lived knowing God. The death of our bodies can't separate us from that relationship with God. It goes on for forever, even after we have died. But it starts as soon as we believe that Jesus was sent by God for us and enter into relationship with God through Jesus. I said I would come back to this concept of perishing. Perishing is the opposite of the eternal life that comes from knowing God. It is keeping ourselves separate from and ignorant of who the God of the Bible is. My wife told me a joke this week that she'd seen online. A woman introduced herself as a divorced widower. What does that even mean? The confused person asked. Well, said the woman, to the rest of the world, my ex is living, but he's dead to me. <laughs> when we keep God shut out of our lives, God is dead to us and we are dead to God. When we enter into relationship with God through God's son, Jesus, we are alive to God with a quality of life that has no expiration date. And we have this life for the simple reason that God loves the whole world and wants to have that kind of relationship with each of us. So just in this one little verse, we see that God loves us and wants to know us. Maybe you're surrounded by loving people, maybe by hateful people. Maybe you feel isolated and alone. But one person who loves you and wants you to know them is the God of the Bible. And knowing God is to live a transformed life. Thank you for joining me this week on Island Meditations. I hope that you've found uh, our discussion to be informative. And if you have uh, any thoughts that you would like to share, um, please uh, address those in the comments below and let us know how you would answer that question, what you would say to someone that wanted to know what the message of the Bible is and what they should know about God as it's taught in Christianity. Thank you for being here. I hope that God blesses you in the week ahead and I hope that God can use us as blessings to others. Have a good week. Thank you.